Today, the rumors are Hillco bought it, I think, for $88 uh, million, the Hillco and Gordon Brothers. And the rumors floating around now are that they value about $350 to $400 million. Uh, that was, I think, 14 months ago or 12 months ago, something like that. Um, so that just gives you an idea of what was left on the table. But, um, but the, the situation here was the creditors were willing to put money into the company uh, as long as they were willing to turn the company over to uh, the creditors uh, to, to run it and or to some you know, independent third party to run it. Uh, they basically came up with a strategy to, uh, you know, to sell it off because they needed some money to fund the professionals. And so they cocked up a report that basically said they needed $200 million to run the company over the next 18 months. And the reality of it is when Hillco took over, I don't think they spent a dime. I think it's been cash flow positive since the day they started. Um, so that just gives you an idea of to what extent people will go to, to kind of uh, uh, you know, have the ends justify the means, so to speak. I mean, the stock market had just crashed. Madoff came out weeks later. Uh, the, the, there was pessimism throughout all the financial markets. I explained to Kelly, is it, do not sell anything. This was right at that dinner where he made me buy that expensive bottle of wine. Uh, I said, we need to stabilize the assets before we sell them. And Dane's right. They needed to pay legal fees, so dump the company. Uh, another quick question. I, I think we have some Sun Country employees or former employees in the audience. Um, their, their question is, uh, how, how did all this affect Sun Country? Is this why Sun Country uh, went into bankruptcy? Was Sun Country already in bankruptcy? How did this affect uh, Sun Country Airlines? Uh, I reached out for Sun Country uh, when I came back. I can't think of the gentleman's name, but uh, Polaroid. And, well, let me rephrase this. We reached out for everybody. I was stonewalled by everybody. So I don't know how it's lucky that Kelly even get his hands on it to liquidate that too. But I, I can't speak to that issue. Yeah, I think the one big interesting thing in this case is how differently Sun Country was treated than Polaroid. But uh, I, I don't, we, we didn't really study Sun Country since it was, it was handled in a separate way. But it seems to me that they had the benefit of uh, not getting caught up in this uh, fire sale. But I, I, you know, I still imagine they lost jobs and people and, and suffered greatly from the from the fact that their, I guess, owner was a, was a, a fraudster. Just to add something about buying and selling companies, I teach mergers and acquisitions law, and I've worked on deals with investment bankers, and it's, uh, you know, I have nothing against selling companies. It's great for the lawyers and I mean, bankers, but, uh, you know, we see a lot of companies in the United States get bought and sold and bought and sold and change hands several times. And I think we need to ask ourselves some serious questions about what does this mean for the employees of the company? Uh, when they are constantly being turned over like this. And of course, you go into an investment banker or a lawyer, um, you know, what, what should I do? The company's having some trouble. We're in trouble. Sell it. Uh, I hear that answer far too often. Sell it, sell it now. Um, and it may be the answer that is in the interest of the lawyers, the investment bankers. It is sometimes the interest of the company, but I'm seeing companies being bought and sold an awful lot in the United States, and it doesn't seem to make sense to me. Yeah, I mean, to highlight the financial services uh, you know, part of their industry, they make a fortune off the uh, purchase and sale of these companies. And they have a, a, a huge vested interest in, in, uh, in, in coming in and recommending to the company that these things are liquidated. And it's, uh, it's very often the people that suffer are the people at the very bottom who, have, who are not at that table at all. And these are companies of long, proud history, Polaroid, great company. Uh, I went to college down the street uh, from there. I go by that headquarters. I mean, that's a wonderful company. Many people work very, very hard. We heard about this man who worked there 40 years. Um, and I'm just wondering um, what we're doing uh, for the employees and the communities uh, when we're buying its own companies like this. And does it empower people like Petters, uh, this, uh, this entire approach? Last, last two questions, because I was told we have time for one more question. Um, <laughs> There's an old saying in politics and government that, that sunlight is a disinfectant. And um, it seems like these days, news media, the people who are supposed to protect us, nobody seems to have the resources to find out what's going on 
uh, in plain sight or, or, or right under our nose. Um, who's supposed to protect us now? I, if, if the media can't afford to do this, to investigate what needs investigating anymore, who's going to keep us informed? Who's going to keep us safe uh, in this brave new world? Jim? Well, well that's, that's not, not only a serious question, that's a scary question. Uh, I, don't, I don't know the answer to that. For, for the news media, staying solvent is a higher priority than investigative reporting. Never mind investigative reporting, reporting the news. And so the media keep uh, increasing their prices and degrading the quality of their product, and then they go crying about uh, why they're losing public support. Who will substitute for reporters? I don't know, bloggers won't. Uh, perhaps at fu uh, privately funded advocacy groups will, but how credible are they if somebody's, you know, Somebody's paying the, the pipe. So uh, I, I wish I could say something cheerier uh, right now. And, and as far as uh, investigative reporting, I don't. I suspect that most of Ryan's reporting and most of my reporting was stuff on the public record. It wasn't gumshoe. You know, it, it wasn't second story jobs. It was looking at documents on the public record, which apparently uh, local media aren't interested. Let me just add uh, that uh, I'm based in Washington. Uh, you can't underestimate the fear factor here. Uh, Dan Rather, just before he lost his job, he gave a talk at the National Press Club, uh, and uh, I don't think he realized what was coming for him, but he gave a talk, and he said the most important factor in newsrooms across the country, particularly in broadcast news, is that you will, is, is fear fear that you will lose your job if you report a story that antagonizes the wrong people. And I'm certainly seeing that uh, in, in my work, and I, I think it's uh, a factor here. I mean, the, the, the paper, uh, the largest paper here, was just coming out of bankruptcy in the same court system. Uh, they're laying off people right and left. It's just much easier to go into the prosecutors, Kelly, get their story. Last week, last quick thing, they had a whole story about a forfeiture deal worked out between Kelly and the U.S. Attorney's Office where he's going to give all his creditors money to the U.S. Attorney and they quote him extensively about what a great situation it is for the victims. None of these people were quoted. None, no, no victims, no creditors are quoted because it's easier that way. Just go to the public official, the receiver, and ask, are you doing a good job? <laughs> oh, you are? Oh, thank you very much. <laughs> and by the way, that's all over the country now. I have to say that uh, reporters are laboring under enormous disadvantage. The funds are not there, as we talked about the economic. But one thing, at least, that uh, reporters and the public ought to have is information. And that's why, once again, it is very important for the justice system to very sparingly uh, use something like the in camera um, uh, approach, where only the judge sees something and the, you know, and the public cannot, um, and uh, ex parte communications. In Washington, of course, it was uh, classifying information. If there's anything embarrassing, you just try and get it classified. Uh, and then uh, declassifying it would be an enormous pain. Uh, and, and that's not appropriate. Uh, information should be there for the public, unless there is an extremely strong reason for keeping it confidential. 